Hey friends, so today I wanna to talk about something that is a struggle in this country and other countries as well, but especially here in the US, there is a major problem with anxiety and depression. So many people suffer from anxiety and depression. And I'm not talking just about worldly people, I'm talking about Christian people also. But if you're a Christian or you're not a Christian and you're watching this, there's still an answer for you no matter what, whether you're a Christian or not, so keep listening. So, you know, we, we see these news headlines of um, famous people killing themselves and um, we, many of us personally know friends or relatives who have committed suicide and, you know, we don't, it's something we don't understand, we can't comprehend, we don't know how to help, you know, there's so many people that are suffering from these things that they're not speaking up, they're not talking about their issues. Um, and they're keeping it all inside, which is not good, but it's also not good to just go and rehash a problem over and over either. So where's the balance? So how do we find a solution to this problem that is plaguing our nation and our young people and people of all ages and all backgrounds are being tormented by their anxiety and their depression? And, you know, for me, um, this is something that I remember starting when I was a little kid, probably, I don't know, maybe nine or 10 was the first time I had a real experience with anxiety. And um, I remember feeling like I couldn't breathe. All of a sudden I couldn't breathe. And I, I believed in my mind, truly, genuinely believed that I was dying. And I thought for sure I was dying. I wasn't getting enough oxygen and that I was gonna die. There was something really wrong with me and I was gonna die. And I remember um, my family members were like, what's wrong, what's wrong, talk to us. And I was just crying and crying and crying, but I didn't wanna tell them that I felt this way because I was worried that they would be worried. I, was, I didn't wanna worry them. I didn't wanna, you know, even my mom, I didn't wanna worry her that, that um, I, I was scared, you know, I was, and that's what Satan likes to do. He likes to, he likes to torment us and, and get us, uh, fear is paralyzing. It stops you from going forward or making the right decisions to, to move in the right direction. And, um, you know, thank God I do have, my mom is very spiritual and she understands the things of the spirit. And so she was able to pray for me and help me. But I never did voice what was actually going on with me. And I don't even really think I knew. And that was part of the reason why I didn't say. I, um, I eventually... Um, I eventually calmed down from that. I realized that I wasn't dying. So even though I felt like I wasn't being, I wasn't able to breathe. I also, um, I also knew I wasn't dying because it had been, you know, several hours of this. And so I, that passed. But you know, even as an adult now, I realized the other day, like I've been dealing with this, and I didn't even know what it was. You know, sometimes we we deal with things and we don't even realize you know, that we shouldn't be putting up with it. And, and um, I was on the plane flying back from Texas and I, I'm not scared of flying at all. I've never had a fear of flying. I've flown a lot in my life, so I've never been scared of it. And, but I remember on, in the flight, all of a sudden, I got this feeling of not being able to breathe. For sure I'm not getting enough oxygen. For sure something's wrong with me. But I knew in my head and in my heart what was going on. And I realized in that moment, this has been happening to me recently. This isn't the first time this has happened recently. I've had this happen a few times. And it was this anxiety that, um, that I guess I just, you know, didn't um, acknowledge that that's what it was. And I, once I recognized on the, on the flight, okay, this is just anxiety. I'm not going to die. I can breathe. I am getting enough oxygen. I prayed in the spirit and I just kept praying until the feeling lifted and it did lift. So that's what I had been doing the couple times before that too. Just not necessarily having to identify what the problem was, but I just, I, I've learned through the word of God how to, um, cast down vain imaginations that exalt themselves to the knowledge of God. That's what the Bible says. And the strongholds that we have in our lives are not outward, they're inward. The strongholds that are holding us back from the things that God has for us, they're not external problems. They're internal strongholds, they're mindsets that, um, that have harbored the enemy. Okay, I heard Bill Johnson talking about it like this and I really liked the way he explained it. These strongholds in your minds are in your mind are walls that you built up 
that the enemy can hide behind. So these are thoughts, patterns, ways of thinking um, that we've just, you know, slowly over time we've, we've built this way of thinking and this way, and we don't even realize what we're doing. And we're building up a wall in which the enemy can hide behind. And um, those strongholds are in your mind. They're bad thinking patterns. Unrenew your unrenewed mind, your carnal nature, your human nature. What, what you naturally want to do in the face of a problem is usually not the right thing to do. And usually the right thing to do is something that's found in the word of God, but your carnal human nature isn't going to pull that up as the first option when trouble arises. And um, I found that um, as I grow in Christ and as I learn and as I continue to renew my mind, my patterns have gotten better. My reactions to certain circumstances have gotten more, um, they've been, my mind has been trained and the Bible says that we train, our, we train ourselves to discern between good and evil. So this is something that can be done through the, through the word and through renewing our minds. But that's not what I really wanted to talk about today. What I really wanted to talk about is ultimately the source. What is the source for all of our anxiety? What is the source for all of our depression? Why are so many people in this country depressed more than anywhere else? We have everything that anyone could want. We have the houses and the cars and the money and the options and the health care. We have all the best things that any country would love to have. Why are we still having these problems? Why do we struggle as a nation more than any other nation with the issues of anxiety and depression? And as always, the answer is found in the word of God. And it's a lot more simple than we've made it. We've turned it into this complicated issue that is too complicated for God. And it's actually very easy, very simple. And I'm going to read you a verse and I'm going to explain to it. I'm going to explain it to you and I'm going to um, show you because I can guarantee you if you're a depressed person or if you're an anxious person, if I were to follow you around in your day and see what you do from the time you wake up, from the time you go to bed, if I were to follow you around for an entire day, for let's say three or four days, I could pinpoint to you exactly why you're depressed, exactly why you're anxious. And some of you are going, well, you don't understand this is a chemical imbalance. I have a problem. I need healing. Well, you're, you're a person who needs to even more understand this concept because it's been scientifically proven that your mind, your thoughts, your, the things you put into your, to your mind, those things physically change the structure of your brain. They actually change your physical brain. Your thoughts change your brain. If you have toxic and bad thoughts all the time, negative thoughts, evil thoughts, tormenting thoughts, and you're embracing those thoughts instead of casting them down and recognizing what they are. If you're constantly embracing those things into your mind, then they are causing brain damage, actual brain damage. And you know, this is an amazing breakthrough in science that we need, we need to um, stop making excuses. If you don't want to be depressed anymore, there's a solution for you. And if you do want to be depressed, then this isn't the video for you and then this isn't going to help you because there are some people who do like to keep their problems. They, they find excuses to keep their problems. They really don't want a solution and they enjoy it and it becomes who they are and their identity and people know them by their struggle. And I don't know about you, but I do not want to be known by my struggle. I want to be known by who I am in Christ. You know, that's all I want to be known by. And so... Your struggle is part of what will build you into the person who you are. It's not something that identifies who you are. And that's important to understand. The struggle is not, we don't want to accept the struggle and, and, and just love the struggle. That's, no, we go get through the struggle in order to get where God wants us to be. Okay, so I'm going to read this to you. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, it says, Come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay, when it talks about 
you will find rest for your souls. Our, we, as human beings, are made up of three parts, spirit, soul, and body. Your spirit is the part of you that becomes brand new when you're born again. When you become a Christian, it, it comes alive. The Bible says that basically your, your spirit is basically dead and empty before you have Christ living in the inside of you. That's your spirit. Your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions. So this is the area where we're talking about right now is, is your mind. This is the area we're focusing on today is your soul. We're going to talk mostly about your soul, okay? Your, uh, uh, let's see, spirit, soul, okay, so soul, and then body, obviously your physical body, right? Okay, we're triune, we're three parts, just like, just like the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. We're made that same way, okay? So this verse is saying, this verse is the remedy and the answer for you to find rest because ultimately anxiety and depression are a lack of having rest in your mind. They're chaotic and tormenting and um, it's not peaceful. And rest is the same as peace. And so you could say that you will find peace for your souls, for your mind. You'll find peace for your mind. You will find rest for your mind. Okay, so what this is saying is, come to me, all you who, are lab who labor and are heavy laden, you're tired, you're, you're, weigh you're weighed down, you're um, on your last straw, you're about to lose it, whatever, I will give you rest. He's saying, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. I will give you rest for your soul. I will give you peace for your mind. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. This is where the renewing of the mind comes in. It's not hard to renew the mind. It's not strenuous and difficult. No, it's easy. Faith comes by hearing. We hear the word of God. We read the word of God and it, 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 that's how we learn from him. <clears throat> I'm gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay, so the reason it says my yoke is easy and my burden is light, because he's not saying that you can just come to me and do nothing. You can just come to me and that's what a lot of Christians want to do. They want to throw themselves on the cross, but then they don't ever want to get up from there. And that's not what he's telling us to do. He's saying my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Let me... Let me take your heavy burden. Let me take your heavy load and exchange it. I'll give you a light burden and a light yoke, and it's going to be easy. That's what it says. It's easy. It's not, it doesn't mean you do nothing, but it's easy. It's with ease. You use, it's, not, it's not strenuous and difficult and heavy. Okay, here's the problem with our society. Come to me. Come to me. This is Jesus talking. Come to me. We don't come to him. In general, people who struggle from depression and anxiety, they don't come to him. And when they do come to him, they're coming to him and throwing themselves at the cross in desperation like a beggar, sad and miserable and broken, but then they never want to get up and follow the direction that he tells them to take. So they come to him sometimes, sometimes, but it's more as a victim, a pathetic, a broken, miserable soul. And that's not what God wants. He wants us to bring our burdens to him and he will give us something else to do. He's not going to just say, okay, go do nothing now. And that's where a lot of people get stuck. Okay, come to me, he says, come to me. Do you know that most people, like I said earlier, if I were to go through the day with most people and stay with them from the time they wake up to the time they go to sleep and stay with them all throughout their week and watch what they do every day, I could tell you why you're depressed. And you might be thinking, well, that's too simplistic. You don't understand my brain. Well, like I said before, our brains can be changed. Our brains can be rewired. Our brains are constantly producing new cells every day. They're producing new cells. Do you understand that that means that, that just like you get a cut on your body and you, you have confidence that it's going to heal and that the skin is going to seal back over it, you know you don't ever doubt that. Why is it that we doubt in other areas? It's because people have told us, oh, there's no help for you. There's no cure for you. You're going to need medication the rest of your life to be able to cope. And we've accepted that instead of the truth that's in the word of God. Come to me. 
So he says, come to me. So let me ask you this. At the end of the day, when you are done with your day and you're done with your kids or you're done with your job and you come home from work and you sit down on the couch and it's time for you to decompress. You've been, you've been laboring and you've been heavy laden all day long and it's time for you to rest. And what do you do when it's time to rest? You turn on your TV. You turn on your TV. You go on your smartphone. You watch a bunch of shows that are full of garbage. And I'm telling you, if you do a little detox from TV and you don't watch it for a little bit, and then you go back to watching it, you will be horrified at the things you thought were okay before. Because the TV is filled with just garbage. It's, it's filled with the lust, the pride of life, the lust of other things. It's, it's, it's filled with, um, you know, just, just lewdness and crudeness and, and just pollution. And so when you turn on that TV, and I'm not saying every show's like that, I'm not saying every movie's like that, but I'm saying that we just turn it on and we just leave it on and all of that garbage from that TV is polluting your mind. It's just, it's just going straight into your brain and it, you're, you're, this is how you're resting. You're decompressing and you're relaxing and you're at your most vulnerable point of the day. You're at your most, uh, you're at your weakest point maybe of your day because you're tired and you're, um, you're just, you're heavy laden and you're, you labored and you're ready to rest and, and relax and you're at the most vulnerable point and at that most vulnerable point, what are you doing? You're filling your mind with pollution from this world. You know, if you don't believe that what I'm saying is true, I highly suggest that you that you take a little break from television or it might not be television guys it may be you know but I, I I would say for probably the majority of people it is television because they go and these shows you guys they're awful they're awful I mean I'm not trying to be you know miss prim and proper but the truth is I don't watch TV I don't watch TV there's nothing on TV that I enjoy because I feel like there's so much garbage you have to sift through that by the time you get to the good parts of the show, it's not even worth it. Um, not to mention the news and all of the, the lies that are being told on there and just the evil and the destruction and just like, we don't need to be so familiar with the things of this world. And I don't watch TV. When I watch TV or a movie or something like that, I'm very intentional about it. Uh, like I, I picked up a movie at Redbox today but it's, it's a movie I've been waiting to see. I've been wanting to see. It's actually a Christian movie. But I'm not saying I only watch Christian movies. I watch movies that I've thought about. I've looked at the, uh, you know, ratings. I've looked at why it's rated that way. I, I'm, I think out the things that I'm going to watch because I am guarding my mind and guarding my heart. The Bible says, guard your heart for out of it flow the issues of life. Whatever goes in is going to come out. And Jesus saw all, talked about this also. He talked about, you know, how what goes in is what defiles a person because it comes out of their mouth eventually. Whatever you're putting into your mind and into your heart is going to come out of your mouth. If you're putting um, just like sex and pornography into your mind, you're going to have perverted speech. You're going to be uh, talking about lewd and crude and nasty sexual things all the time. Um, if you're watching violent movies, you're going to become violent. If you're watching, whatever it is that you're putting into your mind and into your heart is going to come out. And our words have creative, God created us in his image for our words to have creative power as his does, as his do. So we need to recognize that what we put in our hearts and in our minds is just as important as what comes out, if not more important, because what goes in will come out. And so we know we have to guard our heart and we have to guard our mind, but we do not recognize that whatever we're putting in is going to, do you know that when you sleep and you know, you guys can, you guys can study this further about the brain. I highly recommend you, um, go look for Dr. Caroline Leaf. She's an, she's an, uh, she's a neuroscientist. So she knows everything about the brain and how it works. And, um, Anyway, if you'd want more information about this, about how the brain works, about how the brain can, the brain, the physical brain can actually be changed by the mind, I highly recommend you go look for her materials, her books and her lectures and, and listen to those. But the point is, you guys, that if you're depressed, then you need to look for 
what are the things that I'm doing and the patterns in my life that are creating these strongholds in my mind? Because depression and anxiety are ultimately strongholds in our mind. And God wants us to be free from those things. But he can't, it's like, let's say, you know, okay, I have a cut. I'll use this as, again as an example. I have a cut on my arm, but I keep, you know, instead of letting it rest and letting it heal, letting it do what it needs to do to heal, I keep cutting it open every day. I keep putting my arm on that same, you know, uh, sharp area and it keeps cutting the same spot over and over every day. If I keep cutting that same spot, every, that wound is not going to heal. If you break a bone and you keep using that arm or that hand as if nothing's wrong with it, it doesn't get a chance to heal. It doesn't have the opportunity to heal. And this is the same thing for our brains and for our minds. First, is that we are not giving our minds an opportunity to rest. We're not giving our minds an opportunity to heal. We're not giving our minds an opportunity to help our brain. We're continually, day by day, hurting our brain. We're damaging our brain by polluting it with garbage from this world. And I just want to challenge you. If you suffer from depression or anxiety... Take some time. Take, you know, they say it takes 21, form, 21 days to form a habit. That's actually scientifically true. And it takes three of those 21-day cycles, which is 63 days, for something to become your initial reaction. For, you know, when somebody cuts me off in traffic, if I've been renewing my mind for 63 days, my initial reaction isn't going to be to cuss them out. My initial reaction is going to be to give them grace. It's going to be calm and peaceful. These, the way we initially react to a situation can only be changed when we are renewing our mind. So it takes 63 of those days. It takes 63 days, three 21 day cycles for that to completely happen. But I just would suggest starting with one 21 day cycle. Say for 21 days, I'm not going to watch TV or for 21 days, I'm only going to watch, you know, I, I would, t if you, if you're like a junkie and you watch it every single night, I would totally just like go cold turkey on yourself for 21 days and don't watch anything. And then after those 20 day, 21 days, slowly start adding things back in. But take that time that you would normally take and sp spend watching TV, take that time and read the word of God. And even if you're just reading this, you know, start in Matthew, start in the New Testament. But even if you're just reading this one chapter every single day, and that's all you can do because anything else is too overwhelming, then just read this one chapter, Matthew 11. I have a book, um, Overcoming Depression. It's a booklet. It's a tiny book. It's only seven chapters. It's a quick, easy read. Um, and get that. Get that book. I also have another book, Rise Above. It's a. Uh, it's actually 63 days. It's three of those 21-day cycles worth of... Uh, uh, every day you read something, it gives you something to read in the Bible, it gives you a prayer to pray, and it, it, it's basically like an action plan for you to get started on this mind renewing process. But do something like that to fill that time instead. Don't just do nothing or get on your phone and go on social media during that time because that's going to defeat the whole purpose. Take that time and find your rest in him because he's saying, come to me. And so when we come to his word, the Bible says that Jesus is the word. So when we come to his word, we're coming to him. So I would challenge you, if you struggle from anxiety to depression, make that, uh, make that declaration that today, starting today, you are not going to watch TV or, you know, guys, this may not be TV. This may be something else that you do when you get off work. This might be pornography. Listen, pornography is a big, humongous problem. And the majority of people, men particularly, watch pornography every day, sometimes multiple times a day. The statistics, even in churches, men are watching pornography. The majority of men in church, statistically speaking, I want to say it's like 80%. Don't quote me on that. You have to look it up. But it was some, when I read it, I was horrified at the percentage of men that attend church regularly on Sunday morning are watching pornography daily. If you don't think that's going to pollute your mind, if you have a bad marriage or your marriage didn't work out or it's not working out or things aren't going well, then I can tell you that's one of your problems. Because whether, the, whether your spouse knows about your addiction to pornography or not, what goes in is going to come out. And the results will be something that you've already been putting in. You know, we like to blame other people for everything all the time, but then we want to continue to do what we want to do and we don't want anybody to tell us to change it. 
But if you're watching television or if you're watching pornography and you say, I could quit, I don't have to watch, I don't have to watch pornography, I don't have to watch TV, I could stop, but I just don't want to. If that's you, then you, you have an addiction and you need help. But you need to be able to say for these 21 days, and at the end of this, I'll pray for you that you'll be able to, um, we'll, we'll pray for that addiction, but you need to be able to commit to 21 days without watching TV, without watching pornography. Just try that first. Try that first. Because I'm telling you, pornography is one of the number one problems that is feeding this depression and anxiety demon. And it's, it's, it's infiltrating our television. It's infiltrating our children's television, believe it or not. It's infiltrating everywhere you go. It's everywhere. And it's, it, is, it needs to be completely torn out. Especially if you're a Christian. But even if you're not a Christian, you should not be watching pornography. Because I can promise you... It will catch up to you. You do reap what you sow. You do reap what you sow. Always. You always, always reap what you sow. And as believers and as Christians, we can believe that in faith, Jesus will, will take the, the punishment for whatever we've sown that's evil. But you, it's a lot easier to just not sow the seeds because it's a lot harder to trust and be in faith that God is going to take care of these things when they pop out of the ground and they're not good. So, <clears throat> okay. So I'm going to pray for you guys. I'm going to put the link under this to my website, which has both of my books. You can go order them if you need something that to kind of give you it to help you with this because it's hard. I get it. Getting into the word is not easy, but we need to learn how to go to him instead of these other things. And this is where you're going to find rest for your souls. This is where you're going to start. And I'm not saying that it's going to happen after day one because it's not. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some, some discipline, and it's, but you're going to start seeing step by step the progress. It's not going to happen overnight, but you're going to see and you're going to be very happy with the results. By the end of the 21 days, I suggest journaling during these 21 days, journaling how you're feeling, journaling your successes, journaling your victories, and I want to hear about them on this. On this I want you to post them on, this, um, on the comments on this because I want to hear how this is working. Okay, so I'm going to pray for you. So Jesus, we just thank you that no matter what we are going through, no matter where we are, God, that you will meet us in the place where we are and that you don't expect us to just, to just automatically overnight be transformed into everything you have for us, but that it's a process, but that you're here to walk us through this process. And so God, I just pray for everyone that's watching right now. I pray for everyone who ever watches this. Lord, I pray that you will draw people to watch this, that they will recognize, you know what, this is a problem, that I do suffer from these things. And even if I don't suffer these from these things, I don't want to suffer from them in the future because of my decisions now. And so Lord, I pray that you would help them, empower them, quicken this to their spirit right now. God, I pray for every bondage, every addiction of pornography, every addiction to entertainment and television. We just break those things right now in the name of Jesus. And we, we pray that instead of that addiction to those things, that they will be addicted to you, Jesus. They will be addicted to your word, addicted to your truth, addicted to your goodness, addicted to sharing the gospel with other people. And we thank you for it and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I'll post in the comments uh, or in the whatever, you'll see it, the link to my website where you can go and order the book if you need to. But otherwise, I just suggest that you start in the beginning of Matthew. Start in the beginning of Matthew and over the next 21 days, read through the New Testament. That's the best place to start. Even if it's just one chapter a day, replace the bad habits with the good and then track your progress and see how much of a difference and how different overall everything is by the end of that 21 days. And I want to hear about it, okay? So thank you guys. God bless you. I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye.